Welcome back. It's now time to look at the headlines on the front pages of the National Dailies. I'm glad to say we have joining us uh, guest analysts uh, who is with us every week, especially on Tuesdays, uh, Chris Kende Wando, who is a chartered mediator, mediator and conciliator. Uh, Mr. Wando, thanks for joining us. Good morning to you. Good morning, K, the ultimate. How are you this morning, bro? <laughs> yes, thank you very much. Uh, I hope K1 is, is not listening this morning. <laughs> I appreciate your time. No, and, no, um, no. Yes, yes, yes. Thank yes. you very much. All right. Nice to be here. Let's, let's start with a look at the stories coming on the front page of the leadership uh, newspaper. Quite interesting one. They are going uh, with the announcement yesterday on the closure of uh, schools in the Federal Capital Territory. Uh, and the headline there, big one on the front page of the leadership. To avert security breach in Abuja, FG closes schools. There are riders to that headline. Beefs up security in Unity Colleges nationwide. Three soldiers wounded as military repels terrorist attack in FCT. Families of train attack passengers shut down transport ministry. There will be no election in North without their release. Youth won. Uh, PDP calls for special national uh, council of state meeting. Uh, this is a headline that calls for a somber mood and a sober reflection. God help us. On the top of that front page, PMB appoints B Bill as acting FRSC Corps Marshal. ASU strike, NLC ignores pressure, begins three-day nationwide protest today. ASU strike, NLC ignores pressure, begins three-day nationwide protest today. Finance Minister briefs governors on the state of economy today. Uh, CVR, six days to INEC deadline. Millions say may miss registration. 2023, miracle always works for me, Obi replies Atiku, uh, his boss. NIMET raises the alarm over impending flooding in Lagos, Ogun, others. Okada Ban will render 40 million Nigerians jobless, is according to operators. Uh, it's talking about the federal government's uh, mulling of a nationwide Okada ban to curb terrorism in the country. We move over to the next newspaper. This time, The Punch it has some interesting stories. And this time, they choose to go with the, Nas uh, the national strike in solidarity with ASU. It says, ASU strike, that's a kicker. NLC solidarity rally holds today. Police warn hoodlums. Uh, it's a rally. All right, not a strike, solidarity rally. Uh, the writers to that headline, please NSCDC personnel to be deployed in critical infrastructure. Lagos Union directs electricity aviation workers to join rallies. No going back on protests. Mega rally holds in Abuja on Wednesday. NLC. We'll be counting that down to that. Uh, There's a picture of the uh, three hostages released by the terrorists. Uh, those... Uh, you know, lucky victims of the Abuja Kaduna bound uh, train, and uh, you can see them there before they got a shave and before they got to shower and to change. It's quite sad uh, what we're seeing before our eyes. Also, pictured there, you have the families of the remaining victims protesting, uh, protesting rather, and you can see they're wailing and crying with uh, banners appealing on government to please uh, help them. So far. No hostage has been released by the federal government. Rescued, rather. More from the punch at the top of that front page. Wealthy Nigerians smuggling Jet A1 to neighboring countries. Senate. Uh, it's quite sad. FG uh, gets 16 billion naira tax credit for Lagos Badagri Expressway. Wike Atiku has heeded my advice, says Otom. Atiku has heeded my advice, says Otom. I think it is latest. Uh, interview, he says his presidential candidate is Atiku. Uh, like he never did say, he, he wasn't sure he, who he was going to support. Uh, he said God will choose, but now he's saying that uh, maybe God has chosen for him or God has spoken to him. It is Atiku. Next one, 75% of houses in Nigeria are substandard. This is Osheba Joe, the vice president of Nigeria, saying that. FG shuts oil firm, alleges illegal illegal offshore operations. Foreign education gulped $378 million in five months, CBN. And uh, we have uh, at the bottom of that front page, minimum wage, uh, Quara tertiary institutions, workers sign agreement. Four men sentenced to death for killing chief. Lagos declares four-week uh, work-free 
of four work-free days for PVC collection. That's for those in Lagos State. Terrorists injure soldiers in Abuja. Government shut schools. Hypertensive man. Nigerians outraged, outraged rather. Uh, police go after Lasma men. And Tinubu Amechi's allies disagree over vote buying allegations. Of course, that uh, speech by uh, Chibika Amechi, a presidential aspirant uh, of the APC, uh, going viral and giving people some talking points there. Our next point of call is the nation uh, this morning. Uh, interesting headlines on the front page of that paper. And they are not going with the ASU uh, Solidarity Rally, but they are sticking with the, the terror attacks. And uh, they have this big one on the front page, panic in Abuja over attack on soldiers by terrorists. Panic in Abuja over attack by soldiers on terrorists. The writer to that headline, three presidential guards wounded, FCT directs schools to close tomorrow, no cause for alarm says police, all right? Uh, that's one from The Nation at the top of that front page in The Nation newspaper. No North's governor took money to back Southern president. No Northern governor took money to back Southern president. Uh, Tidabu presidential project for launch August 13. And 25-year-old Amusa wins uh, gold for Nigeria. Jump fixes August 5 for mop-up exam. Some of the Stories on the front page of uh, the newspaper, the, the Nation is right. It also spares one, a little space for the uh, solidarity labor strike. It says, Vasti strike, three-day industrial action begins after nationwide protest, says labor. Three-day industrial action begins after nationwide protest, says labor. So the paper obviously uh, trying to look at uh, what would happen after the solidarity rallies across the country. It's one that we hope will not happen because uh, already it seems that parts of national life are being ground uh, to a halt. Let's uh, also look at one at the bottom of that front page. We never represented Khan at Shatima's presentation, say bishops. Of course, on Monday, uh, some of them presented their documents of ordination, you know, showing that indeed they're truly uh, ordained clerics and also informed Nigerians, which, I, which about what I think it was already public knowledge. They never said that they attended that meeting or as representatives of Cannes. I wonder why people are bashing their heads regarding that. Let's look at the <laughs> headlines on the front page of The Guardian. That's a, a last paper for this morning. The big one there, terrorists ambush guards. All right, terrorists ambush guard, guards brigade in Abuja uh, forces closure of schools. Uh, we have... Um, a lot of writers, a number of them, will not look at that uh, because of time, but it's the same thing that the other papers have told us. More from The Guardian. ASU, Labour mobilizes for nationwide protest, uh, three-day warning strike. Nationwide protest, three-day warning strike. Anxiety over sacking in NMPCS company denies move. And the last few stories at the bottom of that front page. NCPC reads Riot Act. To pilgrims as three Enugu pilgrims abscond in Israel. Uh, Buhari, Abiodun, Obaseki, Okoa, others rise for record breaker Tobia Musa Brume. And uh, we have Baker's announced hike in bread prices. I think we're already aware of that uh, if you've been buying uh, the product in the markets. And gunmen kill seven persons in Plateau Village. Uh, all too familiar headline we're getting used to these days from the papers. Um, I'd like to, at this point, welcome once again and bring in Chris Kane Wando, I guess, analyst for this morning. Uh, Mr. Wando, thank you very much for your time. Thank you once again for having me. Good morning. Yeah. Whilst we usually do not uh, analyze the stories that will be given uh, time to in a first or second topics for the day, I think it's important to allow you, um, because of the importance of this, this issue, give us your thoughts uh, on what's been happening in Abuja. Of course, we saw the video on Sunday, the terrorists also threatening President Muhammad Buhari and uh, the governor of Kaduna State, uh, Nasser El Rafai, on Monday, some of the, the, um, the, the, those who were kidnapped had been released and uh, we had the terrorists that ambushed the Guards Brigade in Abuja. Then, in reaction to that, uh, the federal government announced the inclusion of schools in Abuja. Um, uh, you're reaching us today from uh, from Lagos and not Abuja. I do not know if this is unconnected with uh, the mood 
in the in in that part of the country. It's it's your personal choice, but maybe we can learn from from what you you um, you feel as a resident of Abuja to understand the mood of the city. So over to you, sir. Well, Kofi, what is happening in Abuja is a story foretold because um, for months now, I remember the governor of Niger State raised the alarm that the terrorists that we are um, running riots in, um, in Niger State and other parts of um, that region um, are very close to Abuja. And they want the federal government that in the days to come, weeks to come, there might be delayed for them to have a go at the FCT. And that we are seeing. Um, not too far, uh, start with the attack on the Abuja Kaduna train, and uh, where over uh, 50 to 60 passengers were kidnapped and about three passengers lost their lives. Those passengers, are, most of them are still in the dungeon with the terrorists. Just yesterday, three of them were released. I think about 11 were released before after paying huge uh, sum, of, uh, sum of money. Uh, those that are still here, we are still being flogged on Sunday in a video that went viral. Then after that, we also had the attack at the Kujo prison, which from what we gather, there are some security reports to that effect before that attack, but we practically did nothing. And all the Boko Haram commanders that were in that facilities uh, were released alongside so many other prisoners. And now, uh, we, I don't think I count for over 300 of them. Then, uh, with the subsequent one that is going on, um, uh, that was supposed to be an attack, according to security agencies of federal government college, somewhere in Kuali in uh, Abuja two days ago. But um, fortunately enough, that was not carried out. But uh, yesterday or the other day, the soldiers confronted uh, some terrorists that we were told we are heading to the Nigerian law school in Buhari. If you know where Buhari is, um, Buhari is um, uh, about 30 minutes drive from the main city of Abuja. So they are heading there, and uh, I think they had a confrontation with uh, either Brigade of Guard or the Presidential Guard, and about three of them were wounded. I would not know what happened to them, whether they disappeared into the air or ran into the bush. But all this cumulative goes to show that Abuja as a, as a city is no longer safe. The Federal Ministry of Health have done the need to by quickly asking um, schools to close. What I'm not sure now is if, if it's all the um, schools in Abuja, private, public, and federal government colleges, um, the report coming in is not too clear on that. But some schools have been left to do, which means that um, if the federal government is feeling the pitch of this. Um, uh, intending attack, and I hope that the security agencies are fully aware and ready. Uh, we have been talking about this for days. Um, when it was happening in the northeast, northwest, and north central, and also most of other parts of the country, we read as them on a daily basis. But the government, through their spokespersons, will let us that we are safer now. Uh, that the, the, the general, we the journalists that have been alarmed, they are by raising alarm where there is not necessary. They are much more safer now than we were in 2015. But it's hearing us in the face now. And I hope that the government is um, up to its responsibility to make sure that every part of Nigeria, not just the FS, FS, FCT, is, um, is safe enough. But from what we are seeing and from the reports we are getting, it says that uh, the attack are no longer good and uh, things seem to be falling apart according to China. Brigade were ambushed around the Buari Council area, in the Buari Council area of the FCT. Uh, how far is the Buari Council area from the center, uh, the central um, district of Abuja and other areas like uh, the airport, you know, Asurok Villa, for instance? As I said, give and take, is um, from the city center, is about 45 minutes uh, drive. Um, it, it, once you go through the express, um, once you pass Cook, uh, you'll be heading to Bwari. And the uh, Bwari is also a, a close, uh, depending on where you're taking to the international airport. And uh, give and take, just about 45 minutes, that's my own estimate. It has a good road channels now, uh, before it didn't have beds. And that is also where we have so many. Bwari is where you have JAM headquarters. JAM headquarters is in Bwari. 
the Nigerian Law School, the second, I believe, after that of Lagos, is also in Buhari. And there are so many other um, uh, federal government uh, institutions and other institutions that are in Buhari. So Buhari is a very, very strategic place uh, in the FCT and one of the uh, biggest in the FCT. So from the city center, I would say, give and take about five minutes at once. Yes, about forty five minutes um, from the city center to Asoro. So if they are in Buhari, which is about 45 kilometers, um, or 45 minutes drive to the city center, you can now understand the normal city and the, the problem at hand across the issue of insecurity is concerned. Um, uh, how, how porous is Abuja as the federal capital territory of Nigeria? Um, I'm asking these questions because you are not just an analyst, but you're a resident in Abuja. Um, how porous is, or how secure is Abuja uh, being the federal capital territory of, of Nigeria? I hear from some sources that um, you don't have a, a concentration of armed security forces in Abuja like you have in other parts of the country. For instance, you have the brigades in different states and, and artillery divisions and, and so forth. Um, you have cantonments in, in different parts of of, of the country, for instance, in Lagos, we have the Ikeja cantonments. Uh, we have the uh, 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 the barracks in different parts of the city. Do we have the same in Abuja? Because someone tells me that we do not really have even a standing force of about of up to five thousand soldiers in Abuja. They have to come from Kaduna, or other parts of the country. The first part of the question: How secure is Abuja? I don't know. It's for the Secretary of Justice to tell us. I don't know how secure the Abuja is, and I want to know because I don't have the uh, Secretary uh, the Intelligence to say that. But um, we have serious military presence in, in Abuja. The police headquarters in Abuja, you know that. The army headquarters in Abuja. The um, Air Force headquarters in Abuja. And the Navy headquarters in Abuja. Uh, the, uh, the Civil Defense headquarters in Abuja. And um, the road safety is in Abuja. And too many of NIA is in Abuja. And uh, DMI is in Abuja. I can go on. I can. I, 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 I want. I'll help you, uh, Chris Kenwan. DSS is also in Abuja. Yeah. Oh, thank you for adding that. But but, but the, the argument by Abuja. some people, like who like you, say and live in Abuja, is that the, the majority, the bulk of those who are at these facilities, like the the army headquarters, are administrative staff. Uh, I wouldn't want to believe that. Um, the army has its own strategic way, and they need to have its own strategic way of keeping uh, their their forces. And which is what any given point in time. If you are driving in from Nyanya into Abuja, if you are very familiar with um, Abuja from that as it's from Nasrawa State, if you are driving in from the Nyanya, it's when you see this uh, military checkpoint before the uh, there is a bacha barra in Abuja. There are so many barracks in Abuja, so many, so many barracks. Abuja Barra is one of the, the one of the biggest barracks in Nigeria. And there are so many others within that as it's so anybody saying that there are no barracks in Abuja is not true. We have so many barracks in Abuja. If you are coming in, as I said, we are coming from Nyanya end, from Karu end, just before we get to Iwa, um, you, you have the Abuja barrack to the right. And the same thing with other uh, main formations. If you are coming from the airport, you will see uh, from the airport, just as you are leaving the airport, you will be seeing the Nigerian Army, um, uh, Porter, Naval Air Force, uh, so many, even Nigeria, there are so many military uh, formations. And I believe that they have a way of. Um, um, do what they are doing. So anybody saying that there's no military uh, barracks in Abuja, no, that is false. It's not true. There are military barracks in Abuja. All right, all right. Let's let's move on to another story. Stay with the Guardian, uh, which has spared some space for the uh, national solidarity rally of the rally of the NLC uh, with the ASU strike. Uh, they are saying that after the nationwide protests or rallies, they will embark on a three-day warning strike. Um, do you foresee Labour shutting down the country after three days? Because this is supposed to be a warning strike. Well, from what Labour said, they said that after the warning strike, there might be a three-day uh, industrial action or strike. And um, I, I wouldn't know. Most often than not, I don't tend to take this uh, Nigerian Labour seriously, unlike what we used to have in the past. So in the past, when you hear Nigerian Labour Congress said that going on strike, you know they are going on strike. It is well mobilized, and they also carry people along. Uh, really, a lot of Nigerians have lost faith in this particular uh, Nigerian Labour Congress, which is why whenever they go for strike and rest, you see that a lot of people don't seem to um, join them. 
But uh, the one strike protest, sorry, not not strike protest commenced today. I think it's for today and tomorrow. And um, it's solidarity with um, ASU. Um, the members that have been at home for close to about five to six months now, and the government is delivering. But um, um, in, in, why in, in holiday in Casina? The president gave a two-week ultimatum um, to the Minister of Education and some government, uh, some government officials to make sure that the issue of ASU is resolved in two weeks. We are in the second week, I believe now, and I don't know how far they've gone. From information reaching me, I don't think they've gone far. And it, just, it will be just like so many other directives that the president has given. And uh, it will just come and go without us having any serious impact on that. Uh, it has been so many in the past. The president gave directive to the um, Inspector General of Police to move to Benue in those days to get the issue resolved, only for him to tell us that he didn't know that the IG went there. The president has raised a three man panel to resolve the issue of uh, this ASU. Um, that panel was headed by Chief of Staff, Professor Gambari. Nothing came out of that. And there have been so many other directives as far as issues like this are concerned. And the end of it all, nothing comes out. So um, let's wait after two weeks and see what. Um, whether this also will just go, um, just like so many other directives. But in same countries and uh, where democracy or where the president are top of it, the presidential directive and is always like an order. And it must be followed to the matter. And anybody that falls short of the directive of the president would get the hammer. But here, we're surprised that despite the directive, if they're if they not going to resolve it, the minister and the other government officials will be going about their duties. We really know that the president will not do anything about it. That is not leadership for me. That is failure of leadership. All right. All right. Thank you. Uh, let, let's look at the uh, story uh, on the bottom of the front of the Nation newspaper's front page. It's uh, uh, talking about uh, the, uh, in quote, the fake bishops who uh, appeared at uh, the Shetima unveiling last week. Uh, there was a frenzy, you know, uh, response by, by several people condemnation going, coming the way of uh, Tinbu, who is the, the presidential candidate of the APC, and of course, the Christian Association of Nigeria uh, describing them as fake clerics and uh, acting in Hollywood film. Um, these bishops have come out, some of the clerics, not all of them are actually bishops in the real sense of the word, but uh, they've come out to say that um, they never represented the Christian Association of Nigeria at Shatima's uh, presentation, and they also uh, showed documents which they said was proof of the ordination, ordination certificates uh, and documents, give some speeches. What are your thoughts on this? Does this put to rest uh, or to bed any talk of, uh, you know, fake bishops or hired crowd, uh, yam sellers, Okada riders, Agberu, you know, and all that, being the ones that were given the robes of priests to attend such uh, an event? Kofi, anybody can be a bishop. Quote and unquote. Um, now, uh, let me read you this. Most priests are very good pastors. You know that uh, there is a pastor, Chris Oyakilome, there is Pastor Chris Okotie, and I can also be a pastor, Chris Kainde one. So we, Chris, we make a lot of. <laughs> we, make, <laughs> we make good pastors. But on the most serious note, uh, I don't, my personal opinion is that I don't know the expression, why the expression of the part of our politicians, especially the APC to showcase uh, bishops or no bishop, whether fake or no fake. Um, Kofi, we have, in, in our profession, we have fake journalists. We have fake doctors. We have fake lawyers. We have fake everything. We have fake soldiers, policemen, and the rest of them. And uh, I believe in the kingdom of God, there are also some fake um, individuals. But it's not that here, no, for me. Whatever anybody profess, that is business. But for you to now start putting, allow people to put on rope, and line up and uh, say they are bishop of this and that just to the phone. It doesn't. That means you have something that you are you are afraid of. You are looking at the backlash of the Christian community over the Muslim Muslim uh, ticket of the APC uh, the presidential candidate, Alaji uh, Bola uh, Tunubu and uh, Shetima. It goes to show that they know for real that some session of the Nigerian uh, community, particularly Christian community may not be happy with that ticket. So they are doing everything humanly possible to try to give the impression that they have the uh, the support of the Christian community. The other end of the year, I would say that we'd let us just wait to 2023. In the that we determine, create their voting, 
whether they go for the Muslim Muslim ticket or uh, another ticket. There are so many options apart from APC, PDP is there, Labour is there, SDP is there, DC is there. So many political parties that Nigerians can choose from. But for me, don't forget that there has also been some kind of narrative along this line. We are told that uh, Bernard Mechinobu visited the GO of Redeem Christian Church uh, to get some kind of endorsement. Sort of within hours, the Redeem Christian Church LCC came out. Uh, um, Pastor Adebo came out to say no, he's, he's not endorsing anybody, and there was no visit from Tinubu. There have also been some kind of torture and there from pastors. Uh, they are releasing some information like that. Was, that of uh, Pastor Bakari back in Tinubu, back Dr. Bakari. Uh, has come out to say no, there was nothing like that. So I don't know the desperation part of these political parties to keep up sentiments of um, religion. But as I've said, if Nigeria has got it, um, decide that will be Nigeria in 2023. And let's see how that goes when it comes to the election in 2023. All right. Thank you very much uh, for that, Chris Kane. Well, we have more stories. We'll go over to uh, the punch and uh, some interesting ones there. Um, very quickly, very quickly, let's look at the, the issue of um, uh, the, the People's Democratic Party, uh, where you've had a, a certain uh, Governor Tom saying, you know what, he doesn't know, in an interview last month when he was asked who he's supporting uh, for the president of Nigeria, he said God would speak to him. God hasn't spoken to him yet. Uh, this same individual has uh, today in the paper saying that... Um, Atiku has heeded his advice over WK, maybe probably now saying, you know what, I pitch my tent with Atiku Abubakar as, uh, for the position of president of Nigeria in the presidential contest. Is the PDP, do you think, by this statement by Tom, finally getting its act together uh, as far as the whole WK saga is concerned? From the interpretation of what I've seen so far, I would say that um, uh, Governor Otton was economical with the truth. He, he, in his initial statements, where he said that the recommendation we are made to um, allow the Atiku Abubaka and the village under recommendation. But when uh, Atiku Abubaka uh, um, granted that into, into one of the national stations, he, he put there to um, some of those allegations by, uh, by Governor Tom. What he said was that the government, um, the committee raised by the PDP, which was headed by Governor Tom of um, of Benue State recommended three candidates, three people, um, um, for him. And in that meet was we had UK, we had um, uh, uh, Governor Koma and one other person. That at no point did that committee, unlike what Governor Tom said, specifically said that UK should be the first choice. That at no point did he, and that he he, he stands to be. Uh, he stands on the point he was making that Governor Otto to come out and state where he has shown where that he was going to release the report. And I think that got Otto uh, thinking and uh, he woke up from uh, probably his uh, slumber and I realized that what uh, Atiku was saying was so. Based on that, I'm sure that, that was based on that, that um, Otto quickly released that information he did yesterday. So Atiku was right. Um, Otto committee. Did not specifically state that um, Governor UK should be the vice presidential candidate. That committee recommended three people and handed it over to Atiku to make a choice. And they make a choice, he made a choice um, of whom he believed that he can work with, and that was uh, Governor Okoa. So, with this coming from um, uh, Tom, I hope that in the, in the days to come, Governor UK, who has threatened to uh, expose or give further clarification or more information on what is happening or what has happened within the PDP within this period. We also embrace it. This is the time for the PDP to close ranks and make sure that they focus themselves on the nation coming in, uh, coming in 2023. I don't think there's need for this big dream. As, um, I think we also rightly said, he said as lost several times, the election and he just move ahead to the next one. I think that should be sportsmanship within the Without political party, um, in politics you win and you lose some, and when you lose, you just gather yourself together. So I hope that people will be able to get this out together and be able to form a unifying force to us to confront what is ahead of them. They have very few months to go before the general election, and I hope that this will be the beginning of the possibility of putting the house together for the 2023 uh, presidential election, as it were. 
All right, All right. Uh, interesting thoughts and analysis from you, Chris Kende Wando, or should I say Pastor Chris <laughs> Kende Wando. <laughs> there, there are so many, even my, my, own, my own pastor is also Pastor Chris as well. <laughs> so, I mean, maybe there's, there's something with the name Chris and, and being a pastor. <laughs> All right. Chris Kendo Wando is the Executive Director of African Governance and Leadership Initiatives. Creator of How Do You. Uh, we look forward to having you next week on the same segment. God willing. Thank you very much. Right. Do have a wonderful week ahead. Thank you very much. And you too. Uh, it's the 26th of July 2022, but we can always look back in history to see what happened. And that's what we have coming up next today in history. When we return, we delve into our first major conversation. Please stay with us.